Okay, this is the one sheet wonder. After seeing this video, you will be able to build one. This is base the basic template you will need to make it. This is a half sheet of Depron, which is 31.5 inches by 24.6 inches. But if you don't want to get that technical, you can just use it like maybe, I don't know, 25 inches by 31 inch sheet of any kind of foam. It could be EPP or Depron or the pink foam. Anything will work. The control surfaces are if you will be doing mostly slow flying and high maneuverability type stuff and not like being you know really fast you will want that to be three and a half inches like it says on my plans three and a half inches but if you're doing park jet type flying just go for two and a half that will give you plenty you will need to draw a center line the center line is 15 and 11 16th inches from this side they just couldn't go ahead and make the sheet 31 and a half by 24 and a half could they? They had to make it 24.6 inches they have to make everything complicated you will need to cut triangles out of the sides that are 11 inches that way by 13 inches that way off of both sides and keep those one will be your rudder and one will be your fuselage so go ahead and pause the video and look at that sheet and make yours if yours does not look like that then you did something wrong I'll give another once over over the uh, dimensions 11 by 13 for each corner the control surfaces are the cord of them is three and a half or two and a half depending on what type of flying you will be oh yeah and they are one inch away from the center line just do that not from here to here because that ends up being some weird funky number like 24.6 it's not 24.6 but it's another weird funky number that doesn't that turns into something sixteenths which no one likes okay next part will be assembly I'm gonna cut out all the pieces and I'm going to assemble it and also give you the dimensions of the rudder if you're doing it if you're making it four channel it can just be used with Elevon controls and for the fuselage. Okay. Oh my god, what the heck is going on? Alright, here are the dimensions of the rudder. The rudder cord is three and a half inches, at least on mine, or you can make it two and a half. The distance you should have from the bottom of this part of the rudder area is one inch. Remember, you do not need to make a rudder. And if you do, don't accidentally use this side. Make sure it's this side, not this side. See? Oops. I did it on that side first. My bad. So now we did it on this side. That's basically what I'm going to do is cut along that line, hinge it, and there you go. And here's what the plane looks so, like so far. It's starting to look like a delta wing plane or a flying home base. One or the other. I haven't quite figured out if, I, if the One Sheet Wonder was the right name or if the flying home plate was. Oh well. I'll get this rudder glued on and, well, actually, first I need to mark out the dimensions of the fuselage and I'll show you that to you. And then I'll get the rudder glued on and then mark the CG and yada yada yada. Okay. I have the fuselage measured out. This piece. Right here it is three inches up on the uh, 13 inch side. How this will work is, let's say, with the rudder piece, 
it will go right on our center line except pointed straight up this piece right here let's pretend it's already cut which it's not oh well <coughs> we will place this that red line on the center line and these two pieces will glue together like so and a little bit sticks off the nose but that's where you put your motor right in there you cut that out and glue it under there I'll have to make sure that my motor will fit that gap if you're if you're using like I don't know a smaller motor like you want to make this plane really light you could probably fly it with a blue wonder or you know a motor of that size you know keep the plane instead of a, a, the 15 ounce plane it's going to be when I finish building it or maybe 20 ounces you can keep it a nice you could probably keep this plane down to seven ounces or five ounces because it is just that simple. So my motor will just fit in there. Uh, and now I'm going to start gluing stuff together soon, I think. But first, I think I have to cut out that rudder. Well, it's going to just make my life a lot harder if I have to cut it out while it's glued on there. Alright, see you in the next little segment thing. Boom! Alright, the one cheat wonder is now all put together. <coughs> well, the frame is, it has no electronics on it yet. The rudder is hinged because that's the hard thing to hinge with it's actually attached to the frame. I'm right, trying to hinge it. And that's pretty much what it looks like. You know what? Let's go see the original. Look at it, it's right there. Haha. Uh -huh. It even says one sheet and wonder on the bottom. And there's tape on it. And a carbon rod in there, which I'll probably have to uh, forcibly extract from the plane, unfortunately. Oh well. You gotta do what you gotta do. Okay, this is all this is the plane, at least the frame of it, all finished and completed. Put tape on the top for reinforcement and a carbon rod in there and a carbon tube up there. And more tape. And some funky landing gear things to protect the propeller once that's on. That's the frame. It's super easy to make, you know. Depending on how you do your servos, I just like to put some glue on one side and just stick it straight to the frame. But if you're one of the guys that cut out the holes and sticks the servo in there, you do that. You can cut this thing right here and stick your motor so it's on the center line of the wing. What I'll probably do is just put mine as close down to the wing as I can for more prop clearance. It shouldn't really be a big deal. You know. Hopefully it flies as good as the original one does. You know it's gotta be a nice fine plane if you build it again, right? <laughs> Alright.